Welcome to the Plan Commission for July 3rd. Um, we ask you to turn off your cell phone or put it on vibrate, please, so it doesn't interfere with the meeting. And that means commissioners also. Um, if you have not been to one of our meetings, the way this works is um, the staff will present an item. We will ask technical questions and then we will open it up to the audience for comments. And when the comments are finished, then we bring it back to the commission and take a vote on each item. Um, with that, we will call the roll. Boytek. Prop. Aye. Borsley. Here, I mean. <laughs> Present. <laughs> I'm here. Bowen. Cummings. Here. Ford. Here. Hintz. For a second. Kiefer. Bigert. Here. Perry, Mott. Here. You have the June 19th minutes. Uh, what's your pleasure? I move approval. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, first item is street right of way dedication at Enterprise and Universal. Thank you. So the city is requesting um, dedication of right-of-way along the frontage of the city-owned vacant lots at the southeast corner of Universal Street and Enterprise Drive. Um, the area in question um, is right here. It'll be about uh, 2,447 square feet in area. Um, the request was initiated by Public Works to provide um, additional right-of-way area for a cul-de-sac bulb. Um, and the bulb will result in, it'll be about 100 foot um, bulb for a turnaround um, and the turnaround is needed because uh, uh, right of way ends at this property line for the outlet mall uh, lot. Um, here's the proposed CSM document and staff recommends acceptance of the Universal Street right of way uh, as proposed. Technical questions? Hearing none. Anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on this item? Anybody that wants to speak? Back to the commission. Oh, motion approved. Second. Second. Discussion? Hold the roll, please. Cummings? Aye. Ford? Aye. Bigert? Aye. Mott? Aye. Prop? Aye. Borsick? Aye. Motion carried 6-0. Second item, residential design standards variants for a new home uh, on an infill site to use exterior materials not visually compatible with those on other buildings on the block on Stony Beach Road. Thank you. So item two is a design standards variance to allow materials for a new home, basically materials that are gonna be different in appearance and character than the materials on the existing homes on the block. Um, ordinance requires that exterior materials be visually compatible with those on the existing houses or buildings around. Here's the subject site in blue. It's an infill lot. Um, looks like pretty much everything else around it, for the most part, with a few exceptions, has been developed. Um, it is zoned SR5 Lakefront Residential Overlay, right on the lake, as you can see. Pretty narrow. So the designer is trying to maximize the use of the site, um, maximize views out to the lake, um, but also wanted a home that was modern in character um, and in appearance. Here is looking north on Stony Beach there. Um, you can kind of get a sense of some of the foliage that's there during the summer. Um, some of the, the homes that are there existing on the right is one example. Um, I'll show you a few others, but that's just one example there and that is looking north from the subject site. The site would be on the right here. This is looking south, so you can see the site on the left on this image. Um, again, the foliage, and then looking back, you can see some garages, some other homes there a little further down the road. But a lot of times, as you can see, the views are, are screened by some of that foliage and other properties, other buildings. Here is just a, an image showing some of these different homes. So this one was in one of the images before. Um, some of the lots are just garage lots. So you can see here, you know, just a garage there. This is the proposed home here. So you can tell that it's much more modern in appearance. Um, what they want to do is they want to use um, board and batten siding. They want to use um, lap siding, so more traditional in appearance. And then 
most of the home actually would be covered by hardy panels. Um, those are fiber cement panels. They're often used on commercial buildings, so you don't see them as much on residential. What is nice about these is that the designer wants to install them as part of a rain screen system so that um, I know it's less of an aesthetic thing, but it's more of a longevity thing. Um, what they do is they allow rainwater to get in under the panels but drain out of the wall assembly rather than letting it just or forcing it in there and then having it sit and rot out siding or cause other issues visually. So this is something, this assembly is intended to hold up over time. Um, you can see again, you know, some of the other contextual photos there of existing properties, a varied um, assortment of styles. Closer up, looking at what you'd see from the street. Again, it's a narrow site, so what they did was they took two masses and they put those two there together, um, conjoined by a single stair there at the center. You can see mostly fiber cement, um, but again, some of the lap and the board and batten siding. Um, the board and batten would be this up here, and then this would be obviously um, just traditional lap siding. Some floor plans just showing how they um, put these masses together on the site, but then trying to maximize glazing where they could. Um, again, you know, for views and then as a design element. These are the elevations. So um, you can tell, you know, the lakefront elevation, a lot of glazing, but obviously only visible from the lake for the most part. This is what you'd see from the street. Um, and then as you're passing by, you'd see either one of these, depending on the angle. Staff <coughs> looked at this. Um, we recommend approval of a variance to allow for these materials. Um, our finding is that the variance would not be contrary to the public interest because there are already a variety of architectural styles present in that neighborhood. Okay. Technical questions? Yeah, Ed. Can you go back to the, you had color renderings yep. in here, right? Right there. Since we don't get these in the packet, I'm. that's the first I really had sure. a chance to actually get a sense for what this looks like. Mm -hmm. And the and the larger sheets on that on that exterior, what is that material? The the larger rectangular pieces? Oh, these like up here or no. Uh, oh, the gray ones yeah, run in vertical. Right what is that again? I'm sorry. I what believe that's the fiber that? cement there. So is, so are those are those larger like four by eight panels of fiber cement or, it looks or is like, that yeah it looks like they are and the applicant might be able to speak too to that mm -hmm. but it looks like they are and then they have those they have, they're joined you know they have some joints yeah. in there and, yep okay just trying to understand what sure actually well, that's fine um it's probably my eyes tell me what the light color is it looks pink and i don't think it is no it's i think it's like a beige yeah it's supposed to be more of a beige? Okay. Certainly not a pink. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. <laughs> I know the way it's scanned, because we scanned this in, and so it's not the highest quality here. You know, it's a scan, and then it was put into PowerPoint, so that has okay. an impact on the colors, too. Well, if the applicant is here, we can ask about the uh, colors. Any other technical questions? Seeing none, anybody from the audience to speak to this, please? Come up to the podium, give your name and address, and your opinions. Um, my name is Ryan Boynton. Um, we'll be uh, in the future 2820 Stony Beach Street. Um, the color is actually going to be an iron gray color, so it's actually going to be a, a very dark gray. And what you're seeing in between those sheets is actually aluminum channels. So that that's the um, that's part of the whole. Uh, reveal system, the rain screen system. So that holds, and they are four by eight sheets. Um, so, um, part of this, whatever that, uh, the, what do you call it, the batten, looks dark gray, but the other will also be dark, uh, a little bit lighter gray, but so, gray, or no? So the the, the batten's actually black. That's black. Okay. Yep. yep. 
So we'd probably stick with black and then just do a dark gray um, hardy panel. We're, we're trying to stick with what the, like the um, the standard colors just to for for a cost effective means. So okay. And then maybe do like a br like what you're yeah the coloring is definitely off, but that that lap siding would be like a brown to kind of like represent like a wood. Questions of the applicant? I guess not. Thank you. Anybody else here to speak to this item? Stony Beach Road. Anybody else wishing to speak? Back to the commission? Commissioner, the, no, the other note is we, 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 we did mail out. We've had no comments from, uh, from the <coughs> No, we did not. None that I'm aware of. I had a conversation with a neighbor who shall be nameless who said they thought it was a little stark, you know, didn't really quite fit in the neighborhood, but they want to get along with our, their new neighbors, so they weren't going to complain. Steve. I, just, I, I know that area fairly, fairly well, and there is just a m huge mixture of architectural styles going okay. back went to the 1860s, 1870s. So. I think it'd be a nice addition because of the mixture of architecture out there. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Any more discussion? <laughs> Call the roll. Owen? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ford? Aye. <clears throat> Bigert? Aye. Mott? Aye. Borsick? Aye. Prop? Aye. Motion carried 7-0. Next item, central mixed use design alteration review and design standards variance for facade work at 223 North Main. Thank you. So this one is a little bit different than some of the other design standards ones that we've seen lately. This is central mixed use, as you can tell from the title. Um, it is the standards for the central mixed use district are a lot more prescriptive than basic residential or commercial design standards. Um, and the applicant wants to do some facade work and here is the subject site so you can it's a narrow building here it's been there for quite a while um, fronting Opera House Square here to the north um, and then there's an assortment of mixed commercial uses to the or in the surrounding directions so west is a commercial bank and then there's a few mixed uses over on the east and then immediately abutting the building is I believe another commercial building so Aerial of the site, you can see, um, again, Opera Hall Square, you know, so it is kind of a prominent facade. The facade in question is the western half of the north facade, and then there's a little bit on the western facade here. It's a pretty narrow facade, but they want to look at that too. So showing the context, again, some varied um, architectural styles. You know, the, you know, the bank here to the west is a little bit more modern. It's hard to see, but... Um, and here's the subject building, Opera House Square, so obviously not a building, but public space that needs to be accounted for. And then perhaps the most similar buildings are 226 North Main and then um, 224 North Main. This one is an infill building though, so perhaps the corner one would be a better example. Here is a historical photograph of the building in question. So this is the facade that the applicant wants to look at right here. It's treated as like two distinct halves, so um, one building, but you can tell, you know, the cornices and the fenestration and all that is treated differently for each of these halves. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but they, um, the building has been modified quite a bit from its earliest days. So um, hard to tell what's in here. This is the um, region on the ground floor in question. It looks like it's been recessed back, you know, or it was. And then what they, what's happened over time is that the mass of that ground floor facade was pulled out to the sidewalk. Um, so it has changed in appearance, and you'll see. Again, another angle. This one, I'm not sure if it was taken a little bit later. Um, it was hard to tell um, what these facade materials were other than storefront down here. This could be the leaded glass that is shown presently on the building. We're not sure. This is what it looks like currently. So right now they're not gonna touch anything on the second floor. You can see the rich detailing up here on, on the top. 
and then um, what looked to be more or less the original window openings maintained on the second floor. This is certainly not the same as it was in those earlier photographs. <clears throat> um, there's leaded glass transom over here up above, um, punched window openings on the ground floor, a recessed entry here, and then it's hard to see here, but some ceramic glazed tile on the base of the building facade there. Um, what we did was we took this to landmarks. It was not required by ordinance that it go to the Landmarks Commission, but the applicant, as a courtesy, was willing to come in, so we worked with the Landmarks Commission. We got their input on this proposal that you'll see in a minute. Um, landmarks recommended that the leaded glass transom and the ceramic tile remain. Um, and, and then they also wanted to see period glass replica windows put in. Here again, better image showing what it looks like now. You can kind of get a better sense of what this tile looks like. Kind of unique to the building. And then this here is what the applicant wants to do. Um, so again, just focusing on this ground floor here, they want to get rid of either eliminate or cover up the tile, eliminate or cover up the transom window, and they want to put in a brick veneer and red arched, um, basically red arched detailing around the openings. They, they think that this will help improve the facade, you know, based on what it is currently. And also tie into the openings on the eastern half of the north facade. Again, another image um, just showing kind of the same thing. Staff looked at this, and the way the, the standards are written for the central mixed-use districts, um, they're very, very restrictive. So basically, according to the standards, you're supposed to restore to a, the original condition whatever facade you're, you're looking to do work on. Um, we realized that the applicant's using this building for her business, and to require the restoration would require floor plan alteration, um, which would create a hardship on the applicant. So what we did was we recommended that Plan Commission approve this request, but with the following conditions. So one, the variance will only apply for work discussed as part of this request. Anything in the future would have to come back to staff and to the Plan Commission for review. Um, all existing window and door openings would remain at their current sizes and locations. Brick veneer proposed shall be consistent in appearance with the existing brick on the second floor of the north facade. All materials chosen would be reviewed and approved by the Department of Community Development. And then I think there was one more thing. The applicant shall also add more articulation such as banding, corbeling, something, particularly at the base of the facade and at the location of the current transom to ensure a higher degree of visual consistency with the articulation on the second floor. The reason being because right now it's a flat plane Go back to your picture. Um, so, yeah, so we'll show you again. So you can see there's not much detailing on this plane here. And so it does seem a little bit out of place with what's over here immediately abutting it and then with some of this rich detailing up on the second floor at the cornice here. So um, we felt that it'd be more appropriate if they did something to differentiate the base or up here, you know, the transom, something. Something with the masonry to add some sense of depth and detailing and that would be reviewed by us too um, this would all be done before work is undertaken and then the finding um, again a literal enforcement of these provisions of the CMU standards would result in a in a hardship okay David um, are the applicants uh, agreeable to the terms and conditions it seems that they are they did say that they were open to looking at other alternatives too um, you know, this one was their favorite that they had, but they did look at a few other schemes that they were looking at. But the only significant difference in this particular recommendation would be that they would have some kind of banding or some kind of detailing. Yep. Yeah, that didn't seem to be. It, it, I don't think so, and we can check with them. But you know, I, I think that it still allows them to do more or less what they want, but they'd have to just vary the texture. And, yep. Other technical questions? I had one. Um, I seem to remember that there was some Cream City brick 
mm-hmm. on the be- on the west side, and also some red brick. Uh, am I wrong about that? Um. And so, how are they going to? That's difficult to tell. Yeah, it's a little bit hard. But that's. I do think they have a little bit, and I know um, there is cream city brick available out there. I know the city did have some. I'm not sure if anything was done with it, but um, we did have some from when um, Buckstaffs was torn down. And then there are other areas, other places you can get it. Okay, I guess that would be my question is, uh, sure. will the bricks be compatible? Because they're gonna go around the corner on the west side. They're gonna go around a little bit on the corner, yep. And ideally they would be. Okay, um, any other technical questions? Anybody here from the audience to speak to this item? Please come forward. <clears throat> Give your name and address and your opinion. My name is Chris Wills, and the address of the property is 223 North Main. Um, as far as the Corbeline and stuff like that, that is when we went to the historical meeting was stuff that we actually asked if we could do corbeline different dimensions on the building so that there was some dimension to it so it wasn't so flat um i know he spoke of doing some corbeline where the glass was we were undecided about the green um ceramic what we would do there corbeline underneath each window which he said would help um so right on that picture you can't really see it just looks like there's red kind of all around each window we would like to do larger red archways over each and then underneath a line a longer line of corbeline bricks and that would help with rainfall and stuff like that as well so that nothing's going into the walls um character wise we want to do as much character as we can to it to make it look good um i have estimates from grabner glass for turning the whole side of that building back into glass storefronts essentially three huge um, glass windows that estimate came in at 22,000 and then I would still need to do the brick work around the windows so probably feasibly not the best for us I did have a local um, an Amaro company a garage door company come in and he took measurements to do three eight paned garage doors that would be stable not actually moving um i did not get the estimate back for that yet that he came last thursday so there's options um i can't be on the mason's schedule until six weeks from a yes or a no anyways so i have six weeks to decide really what we're gonna do questions for the applicant um, to be perfectly honest, garage doors don't appeal to me. <laughs> um, I, I kind of like this. I love it. Um, I think it's frankly better than the current look. Yes. Since the current look is not authentic anyway. Yes. Back to the original period. Correct. So. Um, yeah, I think there was a fire in that back building. Something like this. Yeah, I love that. Uh, that's what originally what I wanted after meeting with the historical meeting in June. They just didn't want me. They wanted the transit glass left, the glazed tile left, and then just to kind of brick over that gray stuff. And that was too many textures to me. Yeah, but do you have any idea how... How expensive, how, how long, dated how it makes it? ceramic tile and leaded glass have been We're on? thinking around the 1920s because it wasn't original to the okay. building. There was a fire and then in the 1920s we believe they put the glazed in the transit glass in. Oh, okay. The glazed um it's not brick. What is it called? Tile. Tile. Sam- hey, David, yeah, ceramic. I was just are are you you're comfortable with the general recommendations from um, Yes. Staff? Yeah, I, if I'm gathering, you're okay with that. You just want me more textures along where the glass was and the ceramic was. And more character to it. I think that this is better than having the, the glaze and the and and uh, this this is a cleaner and it flows very nicely. Thank you. I like that. <clears throat> and that was the argument with the historical center. They really wanted me to keep all of the the glass and the glaze, and it was just too too much for me. 
So my question about the uh, colors of brick will be compatible. Yes, I did pick out brick already. That is quite close to the Cream City brick. However, I do, he can do some areas with the Cream City brick as he has a connection as well, but it goes up to like six bucks a, a brick for if we do that versus, you know, 87 cents a brick. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I guess not. Thank you. Okay. So then I'll just, um, before we, once he gets me in my schedule and we have an exact idea of what we're doing, then I'll bring that back to a meeting. Is that where I go bring from that here? Bring back to staff. If we, to can, Steven. If we approve it, okay. um, it'll be, you'll be working with staff on. Okay. So I wouldn't need to come to a meeting. I'll just go to the zoning and work with them. Yes. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak to this item? 223 North Main. If not, back to the commission. Motion, Motion approved. Approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay, call the roll. Bowen? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ford? Aye. Bigert? Aye. Mott? Aye. Forsick? Aye. Prop? Aye. Motion carried 7-0. Next item, conditional use permit request for an outdoor storage use at 3300 Medalist Drive. Thank you. Uh, the subject site is uh, 8.92 acres in size. It's located at the southeast corner of Medalist Drive and West 33rd Avenue. Uh, it is an industrial building. Um, it also has associated parking. It is currently being used by Oshkosh Defense for final inspection of vehicles. And uh, the surrounding area is uh, predominantly industrial uses. So here's an aerial view of the subject site. The petitioner would like to establish a, an outdoor storage area to the north of the building. It should be right in here. Um, and as the storage area would be over 500 square feet in area, uh, it would require a conditional use permit. Um, here's the site plan. So again, here's that uh, storage area. Closer view of it. Uh, the total area will be 11,000 square feet and will include uh, 14 parking spaces. Uh, it will be on existing asphalt, which will be milled and resurfaced. It will be enclosed with an eight foot tall privacy link uh, fencing and also have three strands of barbed wire fencing above, which is uh, permitted in, in industrial districts. Um, it will have sliding gates for access on the north and west entrances to the storage area. Uh, the storage area itself should not affect uh, vehicle <coughs> circulation on the rest of the site as the storage area does not obstruct access to the remaining parking areas. Uh, staff is in support of the proposed outdoor storage area as it should not be detrimental to the surrounding area provided the uh, code required screening is provided. Um, uh, staff is recommending a condition that additional landscaping be installed in the grass area fronting the storage area to kind of break up that uh, solid wall, the solid fencing. Uh, Public Works reviewed this and they noted that trucks should use Metalist Drive rather than uh, 33rd Avenue. They should use Metalist because uh, using 33rd Avenue um, will likely deteriorate uh, the street um, if there is significant truck use there. Here is the fencing proposed. It is eight foot tall uh, privacy uh, slatted chain link fencing with 98% uh, uh, solid and also has the, the three barbed, uh, barbed wires above. And staff is in support of the CUP requests with the conditions that the outdoor storage area is completely enclosed by eight foot tall solid fencing. Additional landscaping is installed in the grassed area fronting West 33rd Avenue and truck traffic must use Metalist Drive for access. Okay, technical questions. Gosh, David. Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't have a problem with it as long as that the, uh, the user doesn't have a problem, but uh, that ship has sailed on 33rd Street. And uh, you know, uh, is just a general use of an industrial park. And if, if these streets aren't made for industrial use, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a different problem. Uh, it's a design, it's a city issue, not a, a user issue. Uh, and I would think that, 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 that historically there's been all kinds of truck traffic, heavy truck traffic on that, on that street. I guess comp, uh, you know, Steve's here, somebody that can speak to it, but uh, okay. 
Other technical questions? Uh, anybody from the audience here to speak on this item? Good afternoon, I'm Rick Fisher with Fisher and Associates Architects. My address is 916 Cedar Street, uh, De Pere, Wisconsin. I'm the architect and the submitter for this project. Um, I don't, so basically what happens is, you know, this is one of the satellite operations for Oshkosh Truck, and the reason that the vehicles are not pulled directly into the building is because <laughs> they require a CDL to transport them between properties, so they're just shuttling the vehicles back and forth. They're, as far as I understand, they're, you know, new or reconditioned vehicles that are not loaded, you know, they're not fully loaded with anything, they're just maneuvering them for testing and things. So what they need to do is they need to drop the vehicle at the next location in this storage area. They're owned by the federal government at that point, so they have to be in the controlled area. And then, uh, you know, they'll get shuffled around. So I think that they're, I'm not sure the actual frequency of the, of the turnover of that lot, but I think it's, you know, a few a day. Um, I think that the, uh, restricting the access um, is not acceptable, I, I believe, because one, if we restrict access and have to come off of metal list, then all these trucks will have to drive through the office car parking, which I think is not recommended. That drive that they would be using there on the east side is also the primary, you know, the truck delivery for this facility. And as part of the, our uh, paving plan, you can see we're gonna be reconstructing the, the access along the road. There's some potholes and things. So I know there's some reconstruction plans for um, um, repairing the road edge and all those things because of the, the truck traffic that comes in out of this facility. You're saying so, uh, Oshkosh Corp is is going to reconstruct the edge of the street, or you're saying the city is? I believe that it's it was part of the proposal that I saw from the asphalt company was to reconstruct the rectangular space along the edge of the road frontage. If you go to the next page, I think you can see it. Yeah, so that vertical lines, yep, right there. Oh, okay. Potholes. So I'm not sure if it was done by the city, or I think I think I saw it as part of the proposal. Again, I'm not the general contractor, but. That's what I saw in one of the documents. Well, we'll see what public work has to say on that. <laughs> so you you are not comfortable with the provision uh, to go off Metalist. You want you want access to come from uh, thirty thirty. Right, because I think that's one of you know one of our normal key design elements is to keep the truck traffic away from the vehicles and pedestrians that use the office. So I think you know. We're keeping them connected because currently that lot is connected. You know, right now it's it was it was it's being converted from all car parking to half car parking and half uh, vehicle transient vehicle parking. Oh. Okay. Any questions for the petitioner? I guess not. Thank you very much. Right. We'll check with Public Works. All right. Thank you. Hey, Steve, you're on. Hello. Um, the comment for that was given that 33rd Avenue is nearing the end of its life. Um, if we could avoid getting additional traffic on that to help extend it out, it would be beneficial. It's certainly something we can live without given the conditions and the desire to keep the heavier trucks. I wasn't really sure exactly what the use was going to be out here with, while reviewing it. As far as the work out in front, um, yeah, they're basically reconstructing the, if you want to call it the apron area of the property out in front of there from kind of if you see where the street extended back. But they're, they're doing it. Not they are. They are doing it. Oh, yes. Okay. Or at least it was included in their plan. David, what would be if the the, the supposed two a day? If I, if I heard the, as an example, what's the difference if there's two a day, or there's two semis a day that go and back into the uh, loading dock? Again, I wasn't familiar if it was going to be two hundred a day or two a day at the time just of reviewing. That, you know. It, it seems an unreasonable request from the city uh, that this is an industrial park and that that these road these streets are supposed to be made to those standards uh, unfortunately when this industrial park was developed that was put in as an asphalt street 
Um, so it's, it is what it is with it having an access directly off of Metalist. If it was a possibility to have the trucks avoid 33rd, it would be beneficial to the city. But again, given the considerations for what their use is and what it is, it's not, it's not certainly I'm going to stand up here and argue for it. Okay, so uh, it's all right if we remove that condition. Yes. Any more questions for Steve? I guess not. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak to this item? Uh, evidently not. Back to the commission. I'll move a uh, move approval with the removal of the condition um, that they have to access off Metalist Drive. Second. Okay. Um, any more discussion? All right. Then we'll be voting on. Um, Conditions one and two will keep in and we'll take out condition three, right? Uh, call the roll. Bowen? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ford? Aye. Feigert? Aye. Mott? Aye. Borsick? Aye. Cross? Aye. Motion carried 7-0. Next item, conditional use permit to establish outdoor commercial entertainment at 715 North Main. All right, so we have a conditional use permit for an existing restaurant. Uh, here you can see the site. Uh, it is commercially zoned with a, a mixture of kind of commercial and <coughs> residential uses in the surrounding area. Immediately north of it is UMU zone property, but it contains a single family home. Uh, to the west, you have a mixture of single and two family uses. To the south and east, you generally have commercial land uses. Uh, here's an aerial of the site. As you can see, it is kind of a L-shaped property that has two access points on Main Street, one access point on Division Street. The restaurant sits in the center of the site with parking both on the north, south, and west of the building. So here's the applicant's site plan. Um, we do have some additional pictures uh, with this, but just generally they're looking to take that the uh, northern adjacent parking bays and turn that into an outdoor seating and patio area for dining purposes. So here you can see, here's the existing um, Google Street View of it. So it's these parking spaces where they're looking to locate this outdoor deck patio area. Here is it, they did begin construction of it prior to knowledge that they had to go through this process. Once they learned that they needed this, they did cease work. But as you can see, it's basically taking up that row of parking stalls. Um, would be finished with railing, tables and chairs. Um, would have approximately seating for approximately 25 individuals at tables and chairs out there. And they would access it through this side door of the restaurants. Uh, the applicants did state that their intended use of the property would only be from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is actually more restrictive than our current noise ordinance would permit this type of use. Uh, so staff would uh, recommend approval of the request subject to we limiting them to the 11 to 8 p.m. hours as they've uh, indicated they'd like to use it for. And then also conditioning on that the applicants meet all the uh, appropriate building code requirements through the inspectors division. Uh, staff looked at this, the site is well over parked over the, the minimum requirements, even with the additional um, seating area that would be added with the outdoor seating. So parking was not of a concern. Uh, this is very traditionally found use with, with this type of restaurant and the limited hours really should have minimal impact on the site. Okay, technical questions? Um, quick question. The applicant is here. I will ask about commercial entertainment. Quick question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, and, and the uh, packet indicated it would only be used in the summer. Um, I assume in the winter that it, it would just be against code to use that as storage or anything. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to use it as storage. So do you have any information about the so-called entertainment? Will it be bands? Outdoor entertainment is the zoning ordinances category for any time you have an outdoor dining area. Outdoor entertainment includes anything from band areas to just straight oh, dining. Oh, okay. The applicant is, is indicated that they have no intent to use it for bands or anything. They would possibly put a couple of small speakers out there. Uh, it is a Mexican restaurant that has that kind of traditional music playing while people are dining. Um, but again, staff with the limited hours didn't feel that would be a burden to okay. Okay, any other technical questions? Uh, seeing none, anybody here from the audience to speak to this item? Anybody want to talk about the Mexican restaurant? 
Okay, you're seeing none. Back to the commission. Motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> Any more discussion? Call the roll. Bowen? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ford? Aye. Beigert? Aye. Mott? Aye. Forsick? Aye. Prop? Aye. Motion carried 7 0. Last item conditional use permit request for an off site parking lot at West 29th and Oregon. Thank you. So the uh, subject site is 1.32 acres in size. It is a vacant parcel zoned heavy industrial uh, at the corner of 29th and Oregon Street. Um, the surrounding area is uh, mostly industrial uses along with some commercial uses to the east and a few residential uses <coughs> for the south. Uh, Here is a view of the subject site. Uh, the or Oshkosh Corporation is proposing to develop an 80 stall parking lot on the, on the subject site. Um, and that will be for use by their employees at the at their site to the west of the subject site over here. Um, they feel that the, the parking lot um, at their at their site um, is becoming overcrowded and forcing some of their employees to be parking in the street, um, which is why they're requesting a new parking area, uh, off an off-site parking lot, the conditional use in the heavy industrial district. Um, the new parking lot is not expected to result in additional traffic to the area. Um, it is expected to alleviate some of the congestion in the public right of ways as it will reduce the level of on street parking. So, here's the site plan. Um, the parking lot does meet uh, heavy industrial uh, zoning district setbacks. Uh, the impervious surface ratio for the site will be about 48.5%, um, where the maximum is 70%. Uh, the parking stalls and drive aisles are compliant with the city's zoning ordinance performance standards. Um, as far as access, the parking lot will be accessed from uh, one entrance off of 29th. Um, a lighting plan was submitted, um, and that plan is compliant with the city's lighting ordinance. Here is the landscape plan. Um, this is the most recently submitted plan, which was approved um, as it does meet the city's landscaping requirements, as it has the uh, sufficient. Uh, street frontage park or street frontage landscaping and paved area landscaping, including the trees for the landscape islands. As far as stormwater management, uh, the project is approved with the condition that the site comply with the city's 2018 standard specification and the performance requirements for stormwater, and this will be addressed during the site plan review process. And staff recommends approval of the off site parking lot uh, as proposed. Technical West question. Gosh, you're easy today. <laughs> no technical questions. Anybody here from the audience to speak to this item? Evidently not. Uh, anybody here to speak on this item? Uh, come forward, please. Uh, and uh, give your name and address. And David Gloss, Appleton, Wisconsin. 42 Brentwood Lane, Appleton. Question I had was, was there any... Um, Stormwater management with that parking lot? Yeah, that was my only question. I didn't see that from the back. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, back to the commission. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All the roll. Wow. Bowen? Aye. Reading my Cummings? <coughs> Aye. Ford? Aye. Feigert? Aye. Mott? Aye. Forsick? Aye. Prop? Aye. Motion carried 7 0. Must be July 3rd. Um, we're ready to adjourn, yes. correct? We'll, we'll take a motion to adjourn and then we will continue motion with the workshop. To adjourn. Second. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Okay, we are adjourned.